Those colors and letters on the screen? Sequenced DNA. It lies at the heart of what Academy researchers do. We're looking to understand diversity. What creates it, what maintains it, and why is it getting lost? So most of the studies here are looking for comparative analyses of different species and trying to understand what causes diversity or what controls it and maintains it. But where does that DNA come from? Let's rewind and get to the beginning. The whole process starts with, of course, being in the field, collecting the organisms, and then bringing them back here to the Cal Academy, either as a tissue or a whole specimen. Academy researchers travel all over the world to understand life and its diversity. Take Jens Vindem. For the last dozen years, we've been working in Burma, a country also known as Myanmar. Jens researches the reptiles and amphibians that live there and collects tissue samples along the way. Tissue samples come from organisms, plants, animals, fungi, lichens, whatever. It can be a leaf, it can be a stem, it can be a toe clipping or a tail clipping or a feather even. So a whole variety of things. Jens carefully stores the sample in the field. And when he returns... The tissue is cataloged into the tissue collection. In 1988, we started collecting tissues. And we have a collection of about 28,000 tissues now. Like the Academy's specimen collections, the tissues are stored very carefully. Unlike the specimens, tissue samples have to be cold, very cold. We used to have the tissues in electric freezers, and they're at minus 86 degrees. And at that temperature, the enzymes still can work. That's okay for short-term storage, but if you're thinking of really long-term storage, it has to be colder. If we want long-term storage, we store them in liquid nitrogen and that's about minus 190 degrees Celsius. Primary benefit of liquid nitrogen is the deep freeze, ultra cold, and that prolongs the longevity of our collection, which is primarily the most important thing. The other, of course, is the conservation or the green component where we're not wasting electricity with refrigerators and freezers and so forth. Researchers can extract DNA from these tissue samples even years after they were collected. Our primary role as a research museum is to offer other researchers throughout the world uh, a historical snapshot through time, and they access our collections and our material to do their research. So one of the things that everybody's doing these days is genetic work, and the only way to get genetic data is from fresh tissues. If somebody needs a tissue, and they can look it up on our database, see that we have some, then we send it off to them, and they use it. Last year, Yen sent out 45 packages containing 806 tissue samples to researchers worldwide. And most of them are used in phylogenetic work, so comparing species or comparing groups of animals. And this information doesn't just help scientists. It has the potential to help all of us. As biodiversity researchers here, one of our primary products or results is the health of an ecosystem. Are we losing diversity rapidly because of human impact, or is it a natural process? If it is in fact demonstrable that it is human impact, we can inform conservation policy management and legislators on the best ways to minimize impact on the ecosystem.